uh, show races in the football stadium at Veltins has that put her off she didn't shoot so well there surprisingly Again, a good corner from Sophie Boyi. That will certainly help her close uh, a fraction of a second or so on the race leaders. And Patricia starting to push hard. I think Boyi uh, just show, showing us that, that, you know, a background in alpine skiing, it really is important to attack these corners. And she did it so well. Oh, that, that hurt the head. Well, we're building to uh, what could be a fantastic climax here in Oberhof. There you see the top th three teams only separated by 34 seconds. Uh, five minutes ago, the top six were within 30 seconds, but there have been a few changes with that last standing shoot. But for the crowd uh, and their interest, uh, they're delighted to see that Germany are still in the running. Germany and France pretty much level. The team in blue, wearing bib number two, uh, Elena Padrishna of Ukraine, have built themselves a very, very handy lead. They're some 25 seconds clear of uh, Germany and France. We've seen plenty of falls. The, the latest victim was uh, Ekaterina Shamilova of uh, Russia, Mike, and that's done some damage because the Russians were within 40 seconds. They're now 56 seconds behind the race leaders. Yes, yeah, she, she, she took a, an awful uh, impact on the head when she fell back some, backwards. In fact, they're 1 minute 18 behind now because of that fall. And when you fall backwards, uh, the first thing to make contact with the snow is the 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 wooden part the rifle stalk so therefore the the barrel comes so fast into your head so away go ukraine just six thousand meters and ten targets between them and a famous victory vita Similienko it is who takes the anchor leg she's hugely experienced but more importantly she's had a very good season so far lying 13th in the world cup standing she'll have the confidence to take on the prone certainly here we see the replacement pole good work from the russian team but uh, I think you can see from the expression on her face, she's got a sore head. She had to ski an awful long way with just that one pole from the corner where she fell. Germany and France are going off side by side. Uh, Germany have been up and down. Those uh, two penalty loops skied by Miriam Gustner cost them dear. The French, though, they've uh, suffered as well with uh, Brunet on the very first leg, missing targets and losing a lot of ground on the uh, first leg. So France have recovered well, 43.3 behind. Ukraine, Mike, effectively three spare rounds and half a penalty loop ahead. It's a good, it's a comfortable place to be, but we've seen uh, Vito Siemarenko struggle a little with the, with the pressure in the past. And uh, she certainly, her facial expressions when she set off, I thought she looked petrified. Uh, it's a new experience for her out front for the Ukraine at this stage, the last leg in a relay. And oh, she's hurting. Russia now relying on Olga Vilikina and uh, Vilikina, the best of the Russians in the World Cup so far this year, lying in sixth place. A really good result so far for the uh, Italians. Nicole Gontier handing over to Alexia Rungaldier. Vera Oberhoff are doing the first two legs. That's uh, a fine performance by them. 138 behind. Uh, they finished, uh, as their number would suggest, down in 11th in the first World Cup of the season. And they were well over two and a half minutes behind the race leaders. Well, from first uh, to sixth and, and a two-minute gap, that's such a pity for Poland. It's not over yet, though, for Poland. That two minutes, there's a... As we see, so many things can happen, as it, we saw with Norway. Is it over for Norway? Two minutes, 19. We always say uh, in the men's race, uh, a minute at the last exchange is about as much as you can pray for uh, to, to be able to come back from that. Two minutes, 19. It will be the greatest recovery uh, in a relay, should it happen, and Tora Berger come through to win. There's one certainty, though, that uh, on these hills, on every part of the tribe, Tora Berger is going to be attacking and attacking, trying to close the gaps. Will she do that, or will she say, I'm too far behind, I'll save something for the individual races later this week? 
you, you wouldn't hold it against her if she did that, but no, she's uh, racing for Norway, and I honestly think she will give it everything. She won't care about her own personal races. She's got the Norwegian bib on, she's been selected, and I think she will give it everything. Two minutes 19 behind Ukraine, but uh, you can take 46 seconds off that, so just over a minute and a half behind second place, which is a much more realistic target for the Norwegians. Russia. Olga Vilakina. I think Vilakina is a safe bet on the, on the shooting range and under the pressure. Durant safely round and Nadine Horschler looks uh, pretty solid. I don't think we'll see too many mistakes from either of those two. You mentioned the Alpine background, Mike. Uh, I've always thought that, that a number of teams ignore the, that side of the training, the downhill side of it. it. It's got to be the easiest method to improve. You know, if you are losing percentages on those corners, which many of the athletes we've seen today are very tense, they put the brakes on, it's got to be the easiest method to improve your overall performance is just to improve your cornering. And it's, the, it's gravity assisted. Get on a gentle downhill slope, practice tight corners. It's easy. Nadine Herschler, right? Never having taken the closing stage or the last leg in a relay before. For Germany, she must be feeling the pressure. Still has plenty of uh, experience racing at IBU Cup level. She's 26 now. And if she's going to make uh, herself a permanent fixture in the German A team, she needs a good result here today. That pressure may not help, but she knows just how important that is. And if she does do well and she proves that she can race in front of the home fans, I think the German selectors will look on her very favorably in future races. China have been lapped, Russia coming through, and the Russians uh, losing a lot of time. I think they're now over one minute behind. They were 118, and they're now 127. Here comes Tora Berger. She's been left an awful lot to do today. Two minutes 19 was the initial margin, and uh, as far as I can see, she's not made up any ground in the uh, opening kilometer because Elena Padrishna, or I should say, Vita Samelienko, who took over from Elena Padrishna, is skiing very, very swiftly indeed. I think it is Nicole Gontier. I think this is a, 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 an absolute up and coming team. The young Italians, they're a very young team. Been developed now from the age of what, 12, 13, and just coming good now today. Shamray is the Ukrainian coach, and he'll be scoping and hoping for. Five solid hits. This is where you can't afford to make mistakes. You're the spectators there. They're cheering now as Nadine comes through Horschler. Well, not a single reaction to those hits from... Uh, Shemilianko, and you have to applaud what she's just achieved there, Mike, because uh, that was very, very solid indeed. It was fast, it was accurate, and she's, without a doubt, maintained at least a 45-second lead going uh, into the penultimate loop. It was totally fearless. She got down into position quickly, and no hesitation between each shot. And crucially, was away from the mat before the others came in to distract her. Chance for France to strike. Well done to Dorin Aber. Difficult to concentrate once the crowd, uh, the partisan crowd, should we call it, switch into life. 
And now Germany are going to be fighting for a podium finish again. Flicker of hope for the Russians just coming in now, Vilokina, but that uh, flicker is fading. Well, what a contrast from uh, at this stage in the third leg, Mike, where the top six teams were separated by just 19 seconds. Now, a massive 42 second margin between first and second. Russian rifle, you can just see the different recocking mechanism, it's an Ishmash. But that's a bad start for Vilakina. Well, it's left, left Germany off the hook slightly. Oof. Penalty loops now for Russia. Well, the Norwegians have been there. The Germans, of course, have been there. Oh, two penalty loops for Russia, and suddenly Norway have a chance, but uh, Tora Berger, who was 2.19 behind, I don't think, Mike, she's uh, made up too much time on that first lap. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't appear to. She's going to shoot fast now, though, you would expect from Tora Berger, and she, this is where she'll make time. Nice to hear a few Norwegians in the crowd and uh, in fact the Germans do appreciate anyone who's at the top of their game. They always used to give uh, Bjorn Dahlen a huge reception here and I suspect they will should he get a race in this round of the uh, World Cup. The men, uh, just a reminder, racing in their relay at the same time tomorrow night so I hope you can join us for that. Uh, on the men's front, Germany, Russia, France, but France maybe without Martin Foucault, not quite such a strong force. And Czech Republic now coming well and truly into that big uh, big name frame. And I understand that Yaroslav Sukup, he's making a comeback uh, after a very, very bad mountain bike crash in August. Well, Tora Berger's certainly not hanging around. She's uh, just overtaken the Italians, gone past Alexia Rungaldi without any problem at all. Now closing on Poland and the Bulgarians who've already been lapped, so don't uh, take them into account. Tora Berger not quite as uh, attacking and flowing as we saw before Christmas. Looking a little tired. Well under control for Tora Berger at the moment. Norway uh, currently 2.22, so she's gained nothing but lost nothing uh, significant at the moment. Uh, I guess uh, she's just got to hope that uh, something goes catastrophically wrong with uh, one of the leading teams. Ukraine, France, Germany, the leading three teams as we approach the final shoot. Well, welcome back to the... Climax of this women's relay, only the second relay of the season, four by six kilometers. It's been wet, windy, rainy, uh, as you can see on some of the shots, and very, very misty, but uh, still the performances have been uh, outstanding. Shooting-wise, Mike, we've seen a few penalty loops, but most teams have only had one disaster. That's right, and that, well, the Ukrainians, they've only used four spare bullets, so no penalty loops, and it's the same with the French team in second place, but Germany, penalty loop two times, same with Poland, and the same with the Norwegians in fifth place. Well, an 81% hit rate for the lady about to take her position in lane number one in the stand position, so if she can keep that going, she will certainly clear all five targets with the eight rounds that she has. If she hits four of the first five, I think victory is pretty much assured. Why not do it in style? Well, that will do. That will do. OK, three rounds now to clear that last target and still the next team have yet to take their place on the firing point. Down it goes, no mistake whatsoever, and the Ukrainian team